we have been watching a movie from 1971 directed by a famous actor and director by the name of Jacques Tati. And I was trying to suggest that the overall theme of the film is a critique of modern society. And the idea is not limited to the use of technology. Something that you find in other writers and intellectuals from the 1960s and 70s, specifically, for example, in the books by Italian writer Italo Calvino, who's been widely translated also in English, is that modern industrialized society that has produced the transfer of a large number of people from rural areas into urban areas has produced a sort of standardization of life where everyone is forced to repeat the same gestures both at work and of course the movie if you remember starts with an assembly line in a Renault factory in France but also in society. Society as well is made of rituals that everyone repeats. How do you perform this critical representation of modern society? The director has chosen a character, the story seen through the main character of Messier Hulot, performed by Jacques Tati himself, who's clearly the intruder, who's really someone who is completely out of sync, not just with society in general, but with every specific situation. He's never the one to do what he is supposed to be doing. And even when he tries, he cannot repeat in an identical fashion what the others are doing. And therefore, a perfectly controlled situation precipitates into chaos. The other quality of the critique of modern technological societies in this film is through a series of paradoxes. So a paradox is a reversal of a normal opinion idea. So for example, in reference to mobility, what is the paradoxical view of mobility in this film? That in spite of the overwhelming number of vehicles that inhabit society, they're everywhere, but they don't go far, or they don't go where they're supposed to. So for example, in the main story, this prototype of a recre recreational vehicle full of wonderful gadgets, which is supposed to be exposed in Amsterdam at a car show will never reach its destination in time. What will reach the car show? What will actually be exhibited in the Altra Pavilion in that show? Just the fake forest that you have seen being prepared at the beginning of the film and the only thing that will materially get on time to the show is a tree trunk a real and authentic piece of wood, which is exactly the opposite of a vehicle. Only that will be placed in the Altra Pavilion because the vehicle they're supposed to show will be forced to numerous stops, will suffer numerous setbacks, and to emphasize even further the paradoxical nature of mobility, once in a while, at the beginning of the film, in the middle, at the end, you see frames, ref visual references, to a moon landing. So the paradox is, in modern society, mobility is so great that you can even get to the moon, but you cannot get from Paris to Amsterdam. Okay? And, yes, you will see a lot of people coming and going on the roads. So, you might say, Professor, Cars are going, but even when you see these people coming and going, everything is being seen from an outsider's look who cannot find meaning in all this movement. What is it 
what is this being done for? What is the outcome of all this friend, frantic movement? That is one side of it. The other side, as you see in here, is people are spending time in their cars, not really advancing very quickly towards their destination. And they seem to be one with their cars. The cars is their cage, or better yet, the car in these scenes is like a fish tank, right? And the camera looks at them from the outside, and some of these images are like a documentary, right? This guy is not an extra. This is someone who was filmed by Tati. In the past, you could still do that and not be sued necessarily. So, but how did Tati put together these sequences? Usually, they're connected to a pattern. So, a series of people working their fingers in their noses, or people who later on use their wind, windshield wipers. And so, again, it's like a social ritual for the masses where the meaning of life and the meaning of the individual lives of the drivers and the passengers is being completely lost. So, the film seems to have a very flimsy story, right? Uh, a vehicle is supposed to get to Amsterdam and there are incidents along the road and they never really get there on time. They will get there after the show is over and in fact, Monsieur Hulot, the engineer, will be fired because he, they realize, he is completely inept. At the same time, Hulot will remain at the end of the film one of the few human characters, that is to say someone who has not been homogenized, who is, who is not homologated, standardized, someone who, being out of sync with society, can still seem to be alive. Him and the other character, who's also always non-productive in an efficient sense, is Maria, the woman in charge of communication. And there too, with communication, you see one of the paradoxes of modern life. So many telephones, so many radios, so many people involved with the infrastructure of communication, and yet real content is not being communicated appropriately. And Maria is clearly not the right person for the job. So at the end, they will both leave the huge building of the, um, of, of the car show, which was supposed to house more than 500 cars, and they will walk through another sea of cars. There are cars everywhere. They're just inching forward. And they can simply walk through the cars with a certain lively quality to their conversation, to their talk. But it's like two people, two intruders, two aliens in this kind of society where everything is the same, where people do the same thing over and over without trying to find the meaning, the real meaning of what they are doing or what they are supposed to be doing, okay? So we'll continue from the point where we left when the camera was looking at people inside their cars, right? They're all in complete solitude, right? They're not communicating. They're not going very quickly where they're towards their destination. And it's the, the camera is like the eye of an anthropologist. Who are these people who spend time in the car? How do they spend time? What do they do when they're in their cars? And of course, in terms of communication, we should also mention the advertisement, right? The presence of products, of ads, commercials, etc., which claim to be offering meaning, added meaning to your life through the merchandise. But really, we understand it's just a shallow game, that there is nothing, no value in that kind of content that is being communicated. 